is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. We praise God for another Thanksgiving morning. It's been a year since we met on this time last year. God has been good. He's been good. Blessed us to see another Thanksgiving morning. Hallelujah. How many thankful folks in the house? How many thankful folks? Hallelujah. I'm thankful. I'm thankful to him. Can we stand for a moment? I'm going to read a passage of scripture. Psalms 136. And when I pause, I want you to say, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen? Amen. All right. Y'all got your part? What are you going to say? For his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Amen. Let's try it again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of God. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who doeth great wonders. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights. For his mercy Come on, y'all. Forever. The sun to rule by day. For his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that Egypt in their firstborn for his mercy endureth forever and brought out Israel from among them for his mercy endureth forever with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm for his mercy endureth forever to him which divided the Red Sea into parts for his mercy endureth forever and made Israel to pass through the midst of it for his mercy endureth forever but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who smote great kings. For his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings. For his mercy endureth forever. Sihon the king of the Amorites. For his mercy endureth forever. And all the king of Bashan. For his mercy Mercy endureth forever. Even a heritage unto Israel, his servant. For his mercy endureth forever. 
Jesus said it would be all right. We give you all the glory and the honor. Hallelujah, for you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the ending. Ah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. Lift this up. We give you all the glory. We give you Worship him. Let's worship him. Hey, glory. Let's go on in. Press your way into his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, 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 Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of praise. Have your way today, Lord. Hallelujah. One more time. Let's lift it up. Let's lift it up. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory, Lord. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, Lord. And all the praise, Jesus. We worship you. We're going to receive our pastor at this time. You're so worthy to be praised. We give you all, all the glory, Lord, and all of the praise, Lord. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, let's sing it again. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God you, is great. And he's greatly to be praised. God has done so much for us. Whereof we are glad. And we this morning, we who are here, we just came to tell the Lord thank you. God has blessed this entire universe. Amen. There's not a person breathing that God has not blessed. But we're so grateful that God has placed it on our hearts this morning to gather just for an hour and tell God thank you. Surely he deserves that and more. Amen. 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 We're so glad to see those of us who are here on this morning. We praise God for everyone being here. We just want to do a special shout out to our brothers. Say cool. God bless you and your guest. Amen. That's our brother. And we're good to and we're, we're happy to see you. Amen. And his wife. Thank God. Amen. God is great, huh? Amen. Amen. Happy for you both. Amen. Amen. We're going to just continue our worship this morning, and we come prepared to, to give the Lord a, a thank you offering. Amen? A special thank you offering. So our officers will come. Amen. And those of us that are here, we, we, we just want to continue to move on. Amen. And give God a thank you. Amen. So our officers are coming. Now, if you want to give you a thank you offering by, by way of credit card, uh, you can uh, go to the media center and um, our brother uh, Dewan will receive your gifts by credit card if you want to give a gift to the Lord by credit card. Don't forget, if you make out a check, please make the check payable to Home Assembly Church. Home Assembly Assembly Church. Amen? Amen. We came pr prepared to be a blessing and to receive a blessing. Amen? Amen. So we, we would ask that you would stand, follow the directions of the sanctuary support workers from the rear. Amen. All right. And just bring your offering unto the Lord. And we will... Uh, after our offering, we will, we're going to receive one more selection from our choir or congregational song. One more selection, amen, and then we will have our speaker, our very own emeritus pastor and the person of Suffragan Bishop Vanessa Ussery, amen. Quickly, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for providing us, Lord God, uh, finances that we might bring to you a special sacrificial offering. We pray in the name of Jesus that you bless every individual that gave out of a heart of love for you and for your for gratitude for what you have done in all of our lives. 
Receive this, Lord God. Let it come up before you as a sweet smell and savor. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive again our choir.
That's who we are. Let's receive our speaker this morning, Suffragan Bishop Vanessa Ussery. Yeah. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Greetings and thanks, happy Thanksgiving to everyone on this morning. I, um, I want to just give a couple of thank yous before I get started. I would like to, first of all, thank the Lord for how he's really blessing and using Pastor Jackson here at the Home Assembly Church. I think the Lord needs to be given praise and honor and a spirit of appreciation and thanksgiving to the Lord because he's really been blessing him to minister the word and to teach, and he does it unselfishly. He does it giving all that he has. He spends himself in the teaching and the preaching of the word of God, and that's something to thank God for. It really is. It's something to thank God for because you don't have to wonder if you're going to have to pick bones. You don't have to wonder if you're going to hear something that you got to say, oh, where did that come from? But you know for a fact that God is speaking and God is using him, and so I think this morning it will be just, just perfect in the spirit of thanksgiving to just let's stand and just give the Lord an applause for how he's blessing the pastor on this morning. Amen. It's not an easy task, especially when you have to transition into it. I know from being in there myself and then his turn behind me, and I know how people are. It takes a while for them to get with you. And I want to turn around and thank the Home Assembly Church because I've seen you all transition. I've seen you transition into supporters of the gospel through the new pastor. And I thank God for you because you're helping to make him do his job with a sense of being appreciated and loved because everyone needs each other. We really do. When you read in the word of God, the, the apostle Paul, I believe he writes, he says, I thank God for you all, always. And something that we sometimes don't do enough of is show appreciation and thanks even to one another. And it shouldn't be that we wait for Thanksgiving to do these things, but praise God that those things are on the calendar because it makes us stop and think and it makes us stop to consider do we need to give appreciation and thanks sometimes to those who we've overlooked and neglected, amen? And we sometimes find that we've been remiss in that area. And one of the areas that we tend to be most remiss in, whether we think so or not, is our capacity and our mindset to want to give thanks to God. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. Is that all right? And as the Lord put it on my heart what to speak on this morning, I don't intend to be any longer than the Spirit of the Lord uses me because I know we're trying to get out of here. So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you right quick, and if you would just, if you have your Bibles or whatever instrument that you use, Matthew chapter 14, verse 19, it says, And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And then in Matthew 15, 36, it says, He took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break them and gave them to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And then in John chapter 6, verses 11 through 14, it says, And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley leaves barley loaves, rather, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who has come into the world. Now, in those three passages of scriptures, you're going to find some common events. First of all, what you have is the story that we're all familiar with, and that's when the Lord did these miracles of feeding the multitudes of people because there was not food for them to have and they had been following Jesus and he had been ministering to them and the time came for them to be hungry and they needed to be fed. In the first there were five loaves and two fish and then in the next one you had seven loaves 
and I forgot how many bread, I mean, how many fish, but the bottom line is, is that you had a need to be met. The thing I want you to focus in on is that he always gave thanks before the miracle was performed. And what the Lord dropped into my heart is, is that he says to me personally, and he said to share that with the congregation, we're always looking for God to do something, but we have to remember we have to do something. And it's not that God's not capable of performing without our thanks, but God prefers to be appreciated and not taken for granted. Now, I'm going to tell you something. As human beings, one of the first things that makes us withdraw doing something to help somebody else is to feel like that they don't appreciate you and that they have an attitude of, well, I expect you to do this. And our attitude is, don't, don't expect me to do anything. If I do this for you, it's because I want to do it, but it's not because I have to. I mean, you know how we get. We get pretty, you know, I'm going to tell you how. The bottom line is, is that we do not really want anyone to make us feel that we have to do something for them, do we? That's not in our nature. Our nature says, I'll do it if I choose, but don't. I've been in situations personally where that kind of spirit comes at me like, uh, well, do this or uh, do that. And it's like, oh, excuse me? Uh, what did you just say? You know, I'm not at your beck and call, but if I get around to it, I will. But the bottom line is, is we have to recognize that when we're dealing with the almighty God, who we petition for things. Lord, heal me. Lord, fix this. Lord, do that. Lord, change this. Lord, deliver me from that. Lord, 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 Lord. But the Lord wants us to understand something. Even as Jesus on the face of the earth, he never operated in an attitude that the Father was supposed to just do something just because he said so. Because he came on this earth to give us an example of how we're supposed to operate in the kingdom. And if you and I are in the kingdom and we anticipate to get a response from God, then God expects us to follow the example that was laid out for us by Jesus Christ in order for us to get the same effects that Christ got. Now, one of the things that's so interesting is a lot of us would say, well, look, Jesus could do miracles. He was able to do that. I can't do that. And the Lord says, if anyone thinks that you can't do what he did, he's here to tell you that's a wrong thinking. Because remember, he said that before he left, that the things I've done, you'll be able to do that and more. So in reality, he has empowered us through being in relationship with him and being born again and in the kingdom of God to have the capacity to perform a lot of the things and more of the things that Jesus performed while he was on the earth. But we've got to look and see how did Christ do these things in order for the results that he got to be the results that we get. And I don't know about you, but I find it very frustrating when I try to operate in my life and look for results and can't understand why the results didn't come about when I thought I was doing what God said to do in order to get those results. And I've come to realize that one of the biggest things that is not done enough of, we really do want results from God because our needs are really more important to us than our sense of gratitude. And let me tell you something, if our attitude is to, is to have a sense of gratitude just to get something, God knows that. I, it didn't come out, but I had intended for my article for this week to be called a good thank you or the right thank you. We can say thank you, but not with the right spirit. We can say thank you with an attitude that I'm expecting you to do this for me, so I'm going to give you what you want and expect you to give me what I want. And that is not the attitude that God wants us to do things with. When Jesus blessed the fish and the loaves, he didn't do it with the attitude, well, God, you, because I'm doing this, you better do that. That wasn't the attitude at all. Jesus also understood that we always have need of God to do things in our lives that we cannot do for ourselves. That's a given. When they came down to feeding those people, there's no way possible that you can feed multitudes of thousands of people with five loaves of bread and two fish. It's an impossibility. And what the Lord spoke to my spirit is, look at all of the things that you all have going on in your lives that are impossibilities. We struggle with impossibilities every day. I don't know about you, I'm dealing with financial impossibilities. Maybe you're not, but I sure am. Every, I'm, I'm like, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> you know, when you cut it down to the bone and you got the bone left, you figure, well, what do we do now? Cut it down into the marrow? <laughs> Lord, help. But then the Lord made me to understand something. 
when I had the five loaves and the two fish, or the seven loaves and the fish, I didn't concern myself with my need. I concerned myself with giving thanks to the Father for what I already had. And I said, wow. And the Lord let me see. Spend time, saints of God, praising and thanking God for what you already have. You see, we don't appreciate enough of what we have because you know what? I said it already. We're more concerned about what we want. And so our want supersedes our desire to appreciate what God has already done. God already knows what we need. He says, listen, I'm going to provide you your needs, and I recognize that you have needs. And it's not about not asking God, but the thing about it is, is it's the way we ask God. If we do not ask God with a true heart of thanksgiving and a true sense of appreciation for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he will do, then we're not really thankful to God for being the God that he is in our lives. We're looking at God as someone who's supposed to fix me, change things, and make it work for me because you got the power to do it, and I'm demanding that you find, find the time to get it done now. You know what makes us frustrated and what makes us get tired of waiting on God? Because we're not really appreciating him for what he has given us now. If we can live in the understanding that what he's doing now is the most important blessing that we have, then when we petition him for what we ask for, he is more prone to move to do it because you're not seeking him just for what he can give you, but you're also valuing and appreciating him from the sense of who God really is. And that's a lesson that's hard to learn sometimes because when the chips are down and struggles are upon us and challenges are facing us and we look like we're coming to the end of the line and we don't know which way to go or how to get out we become desperate but we cannot afford to be desperate because once again we need to be the people that recognize lord i thank you that you know the end from the beginning i thank you because you know what's going to happen but to me even before i know what's going to happen to me jesus wants you and i to really get a true sense of appreciation of the fact that he is God and he's in control and he's to be thanked for that. And what is the objective? It gives us a calm. It takes, it takes the edge off of our frustration. It, it takes the irritation out of the situation because the situation can be irritating. The situation can look hopeless. But when we look at it as hopeless, because what we're doing when we do that, I'm talking from my own experience. I'm learning in these latter days, when we look at things and feel like it's hopeless, what we're saying is God can't. Yes, that's what we're saying. But when we start to praise him because we know he can, when we praise him and thank him because we know that there's nothing too hard for, you know, it's amazing even to me, all the years of walking with God and experiences I've been through, it's like, Lord, why does it take us so long to get to the place where we can make this mindset a permanent way of living? But what happens is we think we've arrived, I thought I had arrived on that level till new things happen. New types of, wham, where did that come from? Ooh, how am I going to deal with that? Oh, my goodness, now what am I going to do? When each of those new things happen, I found myself resorting back to the old mentality of, what am I going to do? How am I going to? And the Lord says, stop panicking, start thinking. You know, something happened on Sunday. Sister Elaine and Pastor Marcus and I, and some of you may know about it. And I said to myself, that, and, the, and it came to me what was going on. I said, it doesn't matter. I said, you know why? Because I'm a worship God. I'm a praise God. It doesn't make any difference because God's got it under control. Because when you start to learn to live your life that God's to be praised and thanked and appreciated and honored, you know what it does? It makes the enemy recognize that every channel and opportunity he finds to harass and to pester and to irritate and to frustrate us, he finds after a while that his games become ineffective and they just don't produce the results he's looking for because what we're learning to do is when he comes with his agitation, we turn it into a praise opportunity. 
eternity. We turn it into a, I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. And let me tell you something. You can get to the spirit of praising God so much. Like the other day, I was in my car riding to the grocery store. I was in such a state of constant praise. I just thought, break out speaking in tongues, praising God in the car to the grocery store. Because you know what I recognize? If I want the Lord gave me this, and I put it down on, 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 on what do you call that thing, Twitter or whatever. Your attitude of gratitude can up your altitude in life. That's what God gave me today. I put it on that Twitter thing. Because you know what the Lord is saying? You start feeling grateful to me about what's going on. Let me tell you what, the, what God does. He changes the lenses of your eyes' perspective. And when you see the mess going on around you in your life, instead of you becoming upset about it, you recognize, then you know what? God's taking me a little higher. I'm making another layer. I'm making another step up. I'm moving closer and getting more connected to God because God's now seen that he can entrust me, that I can be developed and processed and changed and made more into his likeness because these troubles don't make me upset. They make me grateful that God is God and God is going to take care of me, mine, and all that surrounds me. And I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus took the elements that he gave those people to eat and thanked God for them, the little that they had, he thanked him for the little. He didn't say, Lord, I thank you because you're going to multiply this and make it more. He thanked him for the two fish and the five loaves. That's what he thanked them for. And what happened with it? Bam! And let me tell you something, they did not see a whole bunch of fish and loaves just pop out the air. What they did is he, he took those same five loaves, those same two fish, and he handed those same little pieces to the disciples, and by some strange power of God, each time the basket went around, there was more in it and more in it. And the Lord dropped into my mind about what happened with the prophet when he went to go visit the woman and her son, and they were going to eat their last piece of cake and die. But the prophet came through and said, look, don't do that. Make one for me. You know what he was teaching her? Thank God for the little you have. And then what? Share that little. That's the next phase. You thank him, and then you share with others the little that you do have. Because when you share what you do have, God's going to turn around and multiply it. I'm telling you something. I don't know what made me forget. But back in the days when Dr. Dancer and I were as poor as church mice, as they said, and I used to tell you we would watch God multiply the check and account. We don't even know where the extra money came from. We checked and balanced and checked. Where did it? Because God has a way of multiplying the little when you're thanking for the little bit you got. Sometimes getting more than a little, it makes it hard for you to remember how to deal with little. <laughs> I'm just, I'm telling on me. <laughs> but I'm telling you, what you have to recognize is that you can make it with little as much as you can make it with much. And I'm going to tell you something. You learn that God will take the little and do much with it. Have you ever wondered what happened to the widow who gave all that she had afterwards? Because the, the Bible doesn't talk about it. But it recognizes this thing. It says God saw what she did. That tells you a whole lot. Because you know what that says? God saw her share the little she had. Believe you me, she did not leave empty-handed. She did not leave living on the streets. She did not leave being without. God was going to see to it that she appreciated him with the little, shared the little that she had. God's going to see to it that that woman never went without. And you know something? We've got to believe that. Not just, we talk me included. We have talked so much Bible, but our ability to live a lot of it is very limited. But we've got to recognize something. We need to take the little we have, thank God for it, share with others what he has given to us. And then the interesting thing was, the Lord says, look, after I got through feeding all of them with what the Father had multiplied, the Lord said, look what I did. I had stuff left You see, we're always looking for more. And God says, what are you going to do with the little you got? How do you, ch see, if you squander the little that you have, then you aren't thankful for it because what you're doing is you, you know, let me tell you what we do sometimes. Y'all just listen to me because the holiday seasons are coming and this is where we get guilty of it. Well, I know I can't afford it, but I'm going to get, I deserve this. I'm going to do this for me anyway. Y'all laughing because you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> 
And then afterwards, you're like, why in the world did I do that? And then we're like, Lord, please help me. I'm messed up. I can't. But you did it backwards. The Lord says, first, take and do right by the little I've given you. You can't squander what he's given us. You can't blow it. You can't just do as you please with it. You still have to properly steward what he gives you. So in your thanking of him, you need to also thank him for his wisdom for good stewardship. You see, the reason why God was able to let Jesus multiply it and have that much more left over, because Jesus wasn't going to waste any of it. We're wasters. Uh Uh-huh. We waste. You know what God does not get glory in? Waste. God likes to see people that do what he tells us to do the way that he tells us to do it and do it wisely. And when we waste, that's not impressive to God. That says to God that you don't value what he's given you. When you take what he's given you and you value it, then you also thank him because he showed you how to utilize it. And when you share it and when you give back even to the kingdom of God, you are investing back into the very same pot that you got it out of. And when you put an investment back in the pot you got it out of, you will reap the benefits of it. And believe you me, God will turn around and you will gather fragments of what you reaped beyond what you even put in. You will find out that you had actually an opportunity to do more than what you thought you could do because you had it done in the right frame of mind. So saints of God, give God praise for what you have. You say, well, I don't have that much. Don't take that attitude. You have what God's given you. Thank him. Be thankful. Tell the Lord, thank you. I appreciate it. I may not have everything I want, but you've given me everything I have need of. I'm not in the streets. I'm not hungry. I'm not naked. I'm not without. I am able to make it from day to day. You see, too, that I am a surviving person. Even in the worst of times or the best of times, you've seen me through. And Lord, I tell you right now, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when the Lord talks, he says, they shouted out, thank you, Jesus. It wasn't done, thank you, Jesus. It's when you really are appreciative, when you, if you win the lottery, or if you win some money, I'm sure you won't say, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate this honor of having all this money, and I just don't know what I'm going to do with it, but you know, I'll probably... Give me a break. Because I've been coming, y'all know, I've been here quite a few Sundays. And I ain't heard a whole lot of hallelujahs that were very loud. I think we need to shake ourselves loose of this, this daydream that we're in. And we need to come to this house of God ready to thank God. Thank, yeah, yeah, things hurt, things ain't right. Oh, if I tell you all the woes I've got, you'd be like, oh my God, Pastor Vanessa, I didn't know it was that bad. But you know what? Who cares? Because the truth is, I'm thanking God. And he's going to bring me my fragments. My basket's going to be overflowing and full of leftovers of God. And I'm not going to squander the leftovers. I'm going to use them in a manner that brings more glory to God. As I draw it to a conclusion, when you look in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, Your theme for this month and for the past couple of months or so has been about walking, our walk with God. He says in verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We have got to recognize the main important will of the Lord is is for his people to be thankful. Why does he tell you, enter my courts with thanksgiving and enter my gates with praise? He didn't say, come in praising me first. 
He says, come in here giving me thanks. You should walk in them doors. Start in your car. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Get in your car start singing some thanks. I guarantee you, if we start walking in these doors and we've been thanking God on our way here, this place will be rocking and rolling with the presence of God, and these seats will be filled up, and our coffers will not be limited, and our ability to serve and work in this community will go over the top. But we are hindering our own blessings, both at home and at the church, because we're not happy with what we have. And as long as you're not happy with what you have, God's not going to give you no more. That's a fact. So you got to know what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is, is for us to be thankful. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns. And Catch that. Speaking to one another in the form of music. Not conversation. We do too much of that. But he's telling us that when we are around each other, it wouldn't do us no harm to speak with one another according to words of songs, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, and what? Making melody. Because when you start to thank God like you should, and you start praising him in songs and worshiping him with the music, it elevates your spirit. I'm telling you what I know. Because the enemy will try to keep us feeling miserable and unhappy and, un and sad because that's a spirit of people who don't think. But thankful people can supersede depression. They can override all of those other emotional impacts that come to us because we move past them through the presence of God, giving him thanks and singing praises to his name. He says, listen. Giving thanks always, verse 20. Giving thanks. How often? We don't do that. We don't. We give him thanks sometimes. We give him thanks on occasion. But can you imagine giving? That takes a conscious effort. It does. It takes a conscious effort. When you start to, act, and I'm practicing this, I've been practicing this for the past, this has been my year for learning how this principle works in action, not just out of my mouth. And I'm learning, and as the year closes, I feel like the Lord has helped me to reach to a pinnacle in it because I'm recognizing that as I exercise this, I feel happier. Do I have more of anything? Not that I know of. Has everything gone the way I want it to go yet? No. Is everything at home the way I'd like for it to be? Absolutely not. But does that have an impact on me the way it has had? No. You know why? Because I'm thanking God for what I have. And you know what I'm learning to do? Even thanking him for the family I have with the shortcomings that exist. Yes. Thank him that they're there. Thank God that they're a part of your life. Thank God for the people that you have to put up with that get on your nerves at work. Because let me tell you what the Lord has shown me. As I thank him for it, I begin to get a revelation from God, the purpose that they play in my spiritual development. They play a part in him developing and growing and maturing me in him. And same for you. So we give thanks always for all things, all things. Whew. To God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Message Bible puts it in a little different way. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get, because these are desperate times. Aren't they? But you know what? We're going to give thanks to God. And my last scripture is in Philippians 4 and 6. It says, be careful for nothing. But what? In, say that with me, in, by prayer and supplication, with what? Thanksgiving. We can't get away from this. We move, and the enemy blinds us to it. Because he knows it's the key. 
He knows it's, 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 like the, it's like the ultimate key to have access to the blessings of God. Because as we give thanksgiving, it's another way of saying that we're blessing God. Because as we thank him, we're saying, Lord, you are the toughest, baddest, most awesome one of all. And we just think of the world of you over anybody, everybody, anything, and all things. And, and we say this song, nobody like you, Lord. Do we believe that? By prayer and such, with thanksgiving. Then what? Let your, but what comes before the request? Thanksgiving, prayer, supplication, with, in other words, you pray a prayer of thanksgiving, then you supplicate. We go backwards. But again, don't do it just because you think it's going to make God do something. Do it with the right motive, with the right heart. Amen? And last but not least, whether we realize it or not, the greatest prayer of thanksgiving that was given and it was broken and distributed for everybody was the body of Jesus Christ. If you go back into your New Testament readings and look at when he presented the first time that they did communion, what we call communion, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks. He took the bread and he gave thanks. He then broke the bread, dispersed the cup, and you know what? The Lord dropped in my spirit. He says, the last thing they need to recognize, I've been practicing giving thanks and dispersing from way back. He says, if it wasn't for me dispersing myself, I couldn't disperse myself to the world until first I was thanksgiving. That thanks had to be given even for his body and blood before we start giving thanks for it. If it wasn't for him breaking himself up and dispersing his blood around, we wouldn't be here today. But his blood and his body has been multiplied amongst us. And today we eat of it and we drink of it. And we say, thank God for the blood. But do we recognize that along with thanking him for that blood, we need to thank him for everything. So my encouragement to you today is what? Start changing your mindset. Get on an attitude of gratitude before Thanksgiving comes. After Thanksgiving leaves. Stop complaining. Stop moaning. Stop saying, woe is me. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Because the Lord told me that doesn't get us nowhere. But let's turn that complaint into a compliment. Let's change the thing. We're going to stop complaining and we're going to compliment God. Amen? I have one last request. And as I do this, I want to do it in a prayer. All of us, as I said, have things that we need of. But today, just join with me with something. Inside of my phone, I keep track of all my finances. All of us are in need of God to bless us economically. I know that for a fact. And the Lord told me today, he says, have them all take what represents their finances. If you pull out your wallet, pull out your checkbook, take a credit card. And Pastor Marcus is going to represent the church's financial needs. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to present what we do have. Not what we're, we're not asking for anything. Let's present what we do have to God. It's not a long prayer. It's not that you got to go and ain't about all the dramatics. It's about believing. Do you have faith today to believe that we can present what we do have and thank him for it? Not just because we know that he's going to appreciate and do something more but because we really have come to the realization, Lord, yeah, I haven't had everything, but I'm blessed. I don't have, I hired some painters, they just jacked my house up. Paid them, and we walk around my house, the wall, the paint's chipping, it makes me just disgusted. When I look at that house, it's like, Lord, the Lord, did I get taken? But you know what? The other day I said, well, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I have a house to be in. 
I thank you that you can bless me to still pay my mortgage. I thank you that, I mean, you understand where I'm coming from? Okay, so they took my money. They didn't do a good job. I even had them to come back to fix it, and it just got even worse. That's just a small thing. But my point is, we all should present, to, and I think our biggest need for most of us is, Lord knows we need better, fine, our church needs better finances. And as he blesses us better, we bless the church better. Amen? So take out what represents your finances or whatever it is that you want to thank God for that you know that you have been remiss about because it's been an area that you've been more complaining or more worried about than you've been thankful. For me, in the past, it's been finances. I don't know about you all, but I'm, I'm, you know me. I'm going to be very honest. <laughs> I don't know when else to be, just honest. I've, I've been very frustrated, but I've learned if the Lord has taken that frustration. I don't have that frustration anymore. And I think that since he's purged me of it, it's put me in a place where I can stand between you and make a, 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 a gap that's going to be closed. Because if we have unbelief, Lord, help our unbelief. Take what you have. Stand on your feet if you want to participate in this. I'm not forcing anybody to. It's your choice. And if you don't choose to, no one's going to look at you and say, what's wrong with you? It's your choice. We don't come to church to force anybody to do anything. It's your choice. Take that representation and put it in your hand. And I'm going to pray and just thank God for what he has given us. Amen? And you can pray, but I'm going to pray out loud. Father God, as we come to you right now for this day of thanksgiving, we want to honor you. Hallelujah. We want to praise you. We want to thank you because you have just been better to us than we could even be to ourselves. You've been our provider, our sustainer, our protector, our guide. You've loved us when we didn't even deserve to be loved. We thank you that you even tolerated our attitude of discontentment. We thank you that you've put up with us complaining. We thank you that you didn't even turn a deaf ear to us, but you continued to listen to us, even when we didn't know how to appreciate you for all that you've done. And Father God, as we stand here today, we ask that you would forgive us, and we thank you for even being forgiven for our areas of remiss and showing appreciation to you for all you do for us. And Father God, we stand here with the things that we think that we don't have, but we recognize that what you've given us is great. It's valuable. It's worth something because it's been given to us by you. So, Lord, we present to you what we do have. And we thank you for what we've been given, whether it's our financials, whether it's where we live, whether it's what we drive, whether it's how we get around, whatever each of us represent in our appreciation. We thank you for what we have and where we are. We want to thank you that whatsoever state we're in, Lord, we are learning to be content. We're content with you being the awesome God that you are. We're content with you being the one that knows our needs and is not going to let us go down. We're content that you know our uprising and our down sitting. We're content that you know that you're going to take care of us. We're content with knowing, Father God, you have our best interest at heart. We're content knowing, Father God, that you have nothing but good things in store for us. And we thank you, Lord, because you've proven yourself to be faithful. You've proven yourself to be honorable. You've proven Prove yourself to be the mighty God that knows how to do all things. And we are grateful today, Jesus, for our lives, for our health, for our strength, for our resources, for our homes, for our clothing, for our minds being stabilized, for us being able to function from day to day. We thank you for jobs. We thank you for all of the things you provide for us, Lord. And we give these things to you in appreciation today, not asking, but thanking you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because everything belongs to you, Lord, including us. We thank you for even being in you. We thank you for being born in the body of Christ. We thank you for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the leading and guiding of your spirit. We just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. You are so good. 
so good. And we just want to let you know, Father God, that we appreciate where we are and the standing that we're in. And now, Father God, we supplicate you for the increase. We believe you for doing more than we can ask or think. And we thank you for the results right now in the mighty, precious, matchless name of our God, our Father, our Savior, our Lord, our soon coming King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe it's done. I believe it's done in Jesus' name. And when the enemy tries to make you think it's not done, start praising and thanking God over top of it. Dance on top of his head. You are a liar. I am overcoming. I am doing this. This is happening because the Lord said so. And when God says so, it is so. Amen? You'll be encouraged. Let's continue to go forth. Let's continue to do our part. Let's continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Let's continue to support and pray for Pastor and Sister Jackson. Let's continue to lift up our church. Let's continue to go out of our way to show God that he is the best thing that ever happened since anything we can think of. And there ain't nobody as good as our God. Amen, Pastor Jackson. God bless you today. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. I want that word to be sealed in our hearts. I'm not going to add anything. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's stand. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with us and upon us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Say cool. God bless you, man. All right. So good to see you.